Hello. Um, as you know, my name's Callum. Um, I design furniture and lighting, and I also design um, commercial spaces as well, so exhibitions and interiors. Um, this is the first talk I've ever done, so thank you for coming along to listen to what I have to say. It means a lot. Um, but I also want to just caveat this talk, um, just to say that I wouldn't consider myself an expert on simplicity by any means, but it is something that I spend a lot of time thinking about and it's something that I try to focus on in my work and my, my design practice as well. Um, so really, I just want to share my, my thoughts and ideas on the topic. Um, so yeah, thanks for coming along and I hope you enjoy what I have to say. Um, so the main question really that I want to ask is what is simplicity? And I think maybe most people got given a little handout this morning. Um, so hopefully I've had time to mull over that a little bit. So I just wanted to ask, to put it out there, what is simplicity to you? And if anyone wants to contribute their thoughts on what simplicity is, that would be more than welcome. I know everyone's very tired. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you at the back. <laughs> But the feeling of ease is how I described it. Yeah, that makes sense. I guess when um, you're not having to like worry about things and you're quite calm, that, that resembles simplicity in a way. Yeah. Anyone else have any thoughts? I always think of things that are yes, edited. Either. I'd say something that doesn't, doesn't make you overtake, like it doesn't make you yeah. more work than you do. So does it make you, does it make I mean, you love a thing? Yeah, but it mean by an object sometimes. Yeah. It doesn't make you, you know, sweat or think about yeah. what's the use of it. The, it's yeah. easy to interpret, yeah. would you say? Yeah, I completely agree. I think that's quite a defining characteristic of, of simplicity. It's that it's, um, you're not having to suss it out or you're not having to, to scratch your head thinking about what it is. Yeah. Um, so I guess, yeah, those two are really good examples. Um, oh, Audra, sorry. <laughs> I would say, um, I, I think of it as something that takes a lot of hard work, actually. Like, yes. There's like, a lot of effort that has to go into making something very simple. Okay, well, I think that is something that we'll get onto in the next 15-20 uh, minutes or so. Um, but I would suggest that most of the time in art and design, um, Simplicity is often attributed to aesthetics. People might think things look simple or the way that it's presented is simple. Um, but I would say, I would argue that, um, well, my interpretation of simplicity anyway is that it's more conceptual, so it's about the idea and the clarity of the idea behind the product or the project that you're working on. Um, and how sort of much of a focus there is in the concept of what is being put forward. Um, so I've got a couple of examples of some famous work that um, you might recognise, which I think resemble my idea of what simplicity is. So the first one is, well, it's more of a movement, is modernist architecture. Um, I think it can be a bit of a Marmite situation. Um, it's a bit cold, personally, but um, I think most people would agree that something like this would, could be regarded as simple, right? Um, so this was designed by Walter Gropius. He, he um, founded the Bauhaus School um, in Berlin last century, and the, the main sort of school of thought in that organisation was based around functionalism. Uh, you might have heard the phrase, form follows function. Um, and basically the, the whole idea was that it, there was a lack of ornamentation. The, the way it looked, the way it was shaped, the way interaction worked in these objects was purely based on what is going to serve the purpose. Um, so that is my first example of what I would consider simple. In quite stark contrast, you might recognise this piece, which is um, Jackson Pollock. Could, like, this is completely abstract. He could have been tempted to make it something like a bit more tangible, maybe a bit more recognisable, perhaps put in some references to landscape or nature or 
architecture or something, but he kept to exactly what his idea was and included nothing more. So I would say in that sense the concept there is clear and therefore it's a simple piece of work. It doesn't feel confused, it's not conflicted in any way, it is what it's aiming to be. So as you can see, both of these examples are quite opposite in the way that they come across. But, like I mentioned before, I would say that because both Walter Gropius and Jackson Pollock have been explicit in the idea that they're trying to communicate, that they, they have a clarity of concept and that their project is simple. Um, so, my next question would be, a bit of a rhetorical question, is just because you can, does it mean you should? So in the context of um, a creative project, especially at the beginning stages, you have loads of ideas bouncing around and you have loads of thoughts and opportunities, oh, I could do this and I've got this idea, I can steal bits and bobs from everywhere. Um, and it's easy to want to do everything. Um, and at this stage, I think it's probably good to be a sponge and have all of the ideas floating around because that's where the inspiration comes from. But um, I would suggest that uh, simplicity and achieving simplicity is an exercise in decision making. Um, because going back to the previous examples, what gives a project strength is that clarity. Um, and often when you have lots of elements that you're trying to incorporate in your project, they can, they can clash and they can be sort of fighting with one another and they might not make sense to be used together. So when I'm working on um, my own projects, questions that I ask myself if things aren't feeling quite right or it doesn't seem to be working it is, what is it that I'm trying to achieve with this and like, what, what am I trying to convey through this project. Um, and then when looking at the different elements um, that I'm contending with, I'm, I'm asking what is it that's supporting this overall aim? Or what elements here are actually distracting from it? Um, and being specific about those points is what is, well, what I find gives a project strength. Um, so really honing in and being quite sort of, almost like filtering the ideas and like for deciding that not that everything is going to be bad but it might not be working given the context of your project um, and it took me a while to work out what this process is called or what the result of this is called and eventually I kind of thought that the best word to describe it would be the essence of a project or the essence of a design um, so, you know when you have all of these sort of different elements and then they don't feel right, you kind of feel a bit kind of frustrated that things aren't working together, but there's a point if you um, are working through the creative process where things just feel like they slot into place. You have like element A and element B of your project and they just feel like they're nestling into place and they're slotting together. Um, and when you arrive at that point, what I find is that these characteristics or these elements become the defining characteristic of your project. Um, and I think, yeah, that is resembled quite well by describing it as the essence of your project. Um, so I've got a couple of examples. I've got them on the slides here. I've also got them here to have a look later um, if you want. But of my own work and how I try to put these um, ideas into practice. So the first one is a little table lamp. Oh, that's not my laptop. <laughs> the first one is a little table lamp that I designed. Um, so talking about what am I trying to show with this design, the main focus that I wanted to convey was the intricate texture of oak. Um, so as you can see here, I've got layers of wood and they become quite sort of curious looking, it creates this zigzag pattern when I 
alternate the layers of wood on top of each other. And actually, as, as sort of visually anyway, it becomes actually quite complex and there's a lot going on there. Um, so, so I just wanted to celebrate the material, essentially. Um, so, really, there's just one focus. There's one sort of element that I want to become the essence of this project. So, um, going from there, you know, obviously I have to work out the little the, the electrics and the switch and everything like that, but I, kept, I decided that I wanted to keep the rest of the product dead simple. And what that allows for is it's not battling with the key point or the key aesthetic or element of the design that I want to make. So it's just a simple cylinder shape. It's not like tapered or fluted or anything like that. The top is just a simple cylinder and the same the switch is just inset at the back here. And it just allows the, this texture just to sort of sing and it, and it, and it stands out and it's not being fought with. Um, so that's not to say to ignore the other elements of the design, it's just that they're sort of paired back and it just allows the, the main point to, to come forward. Um, the next design is a lounge table that's still in development at the moment, so I've got one more revision before this is the final one, but I thought I'd bring this along with because um, it's a good example as well. So the the sort of defining characteristics that I wanted to incorporate in this design were the first one is uh, this fluted texture that I'd been experimenting with for a while. I knew that um, I wanted to incorporate it in furniture one way or another because it's very tactile and it feels really interesting. So it's visually interesting, but actually, as a surface, can I fill it all there? <laughs> It'll feel a bit late if you want. Um, it's, it just, it's, just, it's very nice to sort of interact with on more than a visual uh, level. And the second point was the colour. So I wanted to, to combine this texture with a black surface because um, darker colours tend to um, support and exaggerate form and texture as well. So I had these two elements that I wanted to make sure were the sort of basis of the piece. Um, the first example that I did of it, the first prototype, was a bit of a disaster. It was actually quite disheartening um, because I used a, a gloss finish. This one, as you can see, is very matte. Like it doesn't reflect much light in a very sort of like harsh or glossy way. And the first one that I did had a gloss finish, and I thought at the time this is going to be great, like I've got these lovely textures and it's dark and it's going to have the gloss on it and it'll be really reflective um, you'll see the definition of the surface and in reality it was horrendous it looked, <laughs> it was just visual overload, it really was so I had, I was also using a different type of wood uh, called ash which has a very prominent and pronounced grain so I had the texture itself and I had the gloss finish and I had this really pronounced grain and on the surface of the table it was, it was just chaos basically because I had these ideas that I wanted to incorporate all these things but it just wasn't working um, so this just involved um, just a bit of a rethink really I was like well okay what am I trying to achieve I want to focus on this ta tactile um, aspect so what can I what can I get rid of here like um, so I thought, well, the gloss that kind of needs to go because that's just too much and um, it's not supporting the tactility. It doesn't really make any difference to that. So that was an element that I thought, well, this is actually just—it's actually distracting from what I'm trying to achieve here. The second thing was the type of wood I was using. Um, ash grain is beautiful. It's similar to oak in a way where it's quite defined um, and quite detailed. But in this case, it was fighting with what I was trying to do. So I went for a, a timber called Sycamore, which is a very closed grain. It's really soft and delicate looking, and it takes this finish really well. And in fact, when it's got the black finish on, it becomes almost invisible. And um, eventually, I arrived at this combination of the texture and the finish, but it took time and it took, it took a lot of sort of investment of head scratching and energy to work out what's going on here. Um, 
So, my next question would be, um, well, not a question, it's a statement, <laughs> um, but complicated is easy, um, and simplicity is actually difficult, and it's something that takes time to arrive at. It's not something that you start from, often, I find anyway. You don't sort of start with the, the simple a situation and make it complex. It's something that I find anyway that I'm trying to aim for um, through like, you know, um, several steps of iterations or like working out and like developing ideas. Um, but I would ask what happens if you stop at that early stage, which I mentioned earlier, where you have all the opportunities everywhere and um, you're finding that you want to do everything. If you stop at that stage, I'd say that you end up with a messy concept because you've not um, you've not taken the time to work out what it really is that you're trying to put forward. Um, the hard work comes in the refinement. Everyone knows the feeling of having all the inspiration and all these ideas popping off, but actually the refinement of a concept or the refinement of a design or a piece of artwork is actually hard work and you've, you can find yourself fighting with the ideas and going around in circles um, but it's this process of simplification that allows us to end up a, a strong result um, this is a funny phrase that you hear people saying <laughs> and whether that is aesthetically um, or conceptually or technically um, it, it's, it's an integral part of the creative process um, and the, re the result of this process usually ends in a strong, um, a strong proposal or a project. Um, so I'm going to show you one more example of my work and that is um, where I went through the process of simplification from a technical and aesthetic standpoint. So it's this step stool here that I have, I brought with me so you can see it in real life as well. On the left here is a pretty ugly looking prototype and on the right is the final design. Um, so I spent a long time fighting with this design actually um, and battling with what was working. I think from the get go where I went wrong originally was that I felt that the seat surface needed to be a certain size. So this is just a, a typical utilitarian piece of furniture. It's nothing revolutionary, but it's just a step stool that you'd have knocking around the house. You can use it as like impromptu seating. You can get stuff off high shelves. But I've decided that the seat needs to be a typical seat size. So all the seats that you guys are sitting on will be about 40 centimetres by 40 centimetres. Um, and I started off here and it looked cumbersome and it looked heavy and I was thinking why, how can I make this look lighter it's just far too big and clumsy. Mm. So what I started doing was okay maybe I can like remove some material from the sides to like sculpt it out some bit of material here, the same on the sides here. Um, and I was like, okay, yeah, that looks a little bit lighter. It doesn't look as like goofy and clumsy. And I think, oh, maybe I can taper these legs here. That'll make it look a bit lighter on its feet. Thought I was kind of on my way, but actually this is just a bit of a confused object. It doesn't really know what it's trying to do. Functionally, it, it works, but in reality, it just kind of looks a bit goofy. So I was just thinking, right, well, I know this isn't working. I know it's not, it's not right. So what am I trying to achieve here? What is the purpose of this project, uh, of this product? Um, and really, it's not, it's not an armchair. It doesn't have to have a massive sitting surface. It's for you know, like impromptu seating. It just needs to be a little perch. So I thought, okay, right, so the seat doesn't need to be that big. So from there, I halved the size of the seat down to 20 centimetres, and immediately it looked lighter, and it looked like it was um, better balanced and better composed, and it meant that I could take 
also the size of the step in as well. And because it was smaller proportions, it meant that I didn't have to take these uh, edges out because there wasn't loads of material getting in the way. And because it looked more proportionate, I didn't have to taper the legs here as well, so I could keep these straight. So from a from a technical perspective, it's much easier to make. This was a faff to have to work out. You can't do that with just like typical tools. You have to be like sculpting it out. And from a production point of view, it's just a nightmare. So because I've reduced the size of the seat, everything else just falls into place. And it's that questioning of what it is that you're trying to achieve. Usually there is a simple result. Um, and yeah, in that case, it was just the process of um, re reduction in a sense of the, the technicality of it, just trying to remove the complication from the, from the design. Um, so the point that I'm trying to make really is that um, reduction takes time and achieving clarity with a concept or a project takes time and it takes energy to do and it isn't something that you can just arrive at straight away. Um, and I think it's that I've got a quote next which I'll show you, which I think sums up what I'm trying to say really well. It's by um, a philosopher called uh, Blaise Pascal, who was a he was a philosopher and a mathematician. He did all sorts of stuff. He was a really clever guy, um, but he was known for his really clear communication of complex ideas. Um, but at the end of a letter that he wrote to his friend, um, at one point, he said, if I had more time, I would have written a shorter letter. <laughs> Thank you for listening. <laughs>
Because most of us are students from, a lot of us are students from GSA as well. So okay. I'm wondering when you did your studies before, like I, were you part designer? Like, did you choose to become one in the beginning? Yeah. What did you just say? Yeah, so um, I studied quite a bit ago um, product and furniture design in Northumbria University in Newcastle. Um, and left there, moved to Leeds and took a massive detour around and eventually have come back to doing product and furniture design. I worked in um, events design and exhibitions and sort of corporate interiors and things for quite some time, which I still do a little bit of as well. Um, but maybe about three, three, four years ago, I got back onto making with my hands, which is essentially what I was craving. So, because a lot of, well, 99% of my work was computer based, I just really felt the need to make things again. And yeah, fortunately, I had the opportunity to be able to get a studio in Glasgow and do that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's been a bit of a, a return to what I wanted to do. I think that's quite inspiring as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, part of what's inspired me watching you work, you know, through Instagram and, and yeah. through your site and things like that is is seeing, you know, how you evolve ideas and it, it kind of sounds like it's that's kind of part and parcel with your career, like with your creative journey is like you kind of try things and then learn from them. And, you know, yeah. yeah, I think it's probably like, um, in fact, when I was when I was preparing for this talk, I guess it's quite ironic. I wanted to talk about everything to do with simplicity, but I had to whittle it down to something. <laughs> um, but I think almost like as an evolution of what you're saying, Andrew, about it's applicable to, to music. I think it's applicable to, I think it's a universal concept. I think it's applicable to life. I think it's applicable to career and relationships and, and everything.